Hello everyone, this is Team Eagle Eye, and today we will be going over our project, Battery Management Research System, uh, that is sponsored by Eagle Pitcher. Our technical directors are Daniel Wirtz, Senior System Engineer, and Brendan Moore, Software Engineer. Our team consists of one computer engineer and three electrical engineers. Brendan Lorena, Computer Engineer, Benjamin Feeney, Electrical Engineer, Peter Martin, electrical engineer, and finally, myself, Adam Anaptawi, electrical engineer. Eagle Picture Technologies is one of the leading producers of batteries and energetic devices. For more than 75 years, they have been serving the mission-critical aerospace, defense, and aviation battery markets. Eagle Picture batteries are a key component of the U.S. space program. Their batteries provided the emergency power that successfully brought the Apollo 13 crew home. Today, Eagle Pitcher batteries power the International Space Station, Mars rovers, commercial jets and helicopters, and more than 85% of the U.S. missile platforms. In a world shaped by the ever-growing need for enhanced technology, batteries are the backbone of what fuels such technologies. In recent years, engineers have developed the lithium-ion battery, which is more efficient and substantial than a regular battery. The problem with these battery types is that they are unpredictable. Having the ability to predict when a cell is deteriorating is almost impossible. If not properly charged and discharged, they can cause injuries or even fatalities. Our vision is to create a better testing platform to replace the commercial battery management research systems that are limited by their sensor accuracy and find new ways to make batteries last longer and be safer for the consumers. Our anticipated best outcome is to improve last year BMS system by implementing new and improved component that will elevate the accuracy and speed of the tests. This will yield better data for voltage, current, and temperature, which can help us determine the state of health and state of charge of our batteries in a more accurate and efficient way. When the best outcome for this project is met, we would provide Eagle Picture with an improved functioning BMRS that can run live tests on lithium ion batteries. The economic impact of this project would be a massive success for battery safety. Lithium ion batteries are some of the best batteries on the market, though when put under too much stress, they can become very dangerous. Economically, the goal of the BMRS is to help prevent disasters involving lithium ion batteries and improve the longevity of lithium ion batteries. Since the beginning of the semester, the team investigated and got familiar with last year's test platform. We discussed areas of improvement such as creating a new discrete load that is programmable with a GUI. The team have also identified a new power supply that will be better fitted for our test platform. Efforts began to create a GUI for our discrete load with eight logic channels that will control eight channels with different powers for the discrete load. PCB designs on Altium have also started to create a schematic and a footprint for the discrete load. The team has also successfully created the lowest channel of power of the discrete load as a dummy discrete load and tested it for proof of concept, which went over successfully. Now I'll go over my technical contribution for this project and my future planned technical contributions. I started by getting familiar as with last year's test platform and took notes on the user manual. After discussions with the team about areas of improvements, I started researching the screen load and learned how they would be beneficial to our test platform. Later on, I calculated needed resistance values for the potentiometer that will be used in the discrete load. I was also responsible for creating an Altium PCB schematic and footprint for the finalized discrete load that we are planning on building. In addition, I was responsible for soldering the dummy discrete load of the load channel and tested it 
for proof of concept. I also explored new solutions for the housing of the batteries, such as the Vruzet battery kit and rat sock connectors. Before the end of the project, I plan on completing the Ultium schematic footprint design and assembling the finalized discrete load. I plan on utilizing the new discrete load in the test platform and collect new and improved data and comparing them to the old results. How's it going everyone? My name is Brendan and I'll be discussing the software aspect of the project as well as the additional contributions. We are using a digital I.O. device from MC Computing dubbed the USB 1208 FS Plus in order to communicate with the new discrete load. First, I created a console-based application that can detect, control, and configure individual ports for digital output on the I.O. device. This allows for the user to toggle the eight channels on and off and simultaneously display input feedback via device LED. After successfully testing the program with the load prototype, I began to adapt the console-based application into a GUI for a user-friendly experience. I also assisted in researching areas of improvement for the AMBATS testing platform, as well as familiarizing myself with each of its various components. My main focus was with the battery management monitoring software, as well as the software side of the discrete load. I also plan on and on adding additional features to the GUI in order to enhance its functionality. One feature is to allow for the creation of dynamic time-based profiles in order to apply to the battery pack. This will allow us to more accurately run tests with the AMBATS platform in order to simulate real-world electronic devices. Expanding on the previous feature, allowing dynamic profiles to be set on an interactive graph will help with better visualization of the set profile before actually applying it. The last feature to be included in the software is to add functionality to the load value text box in order to specify amperage to the battery cells. Eventually, we will team up with the Oracle team in order to run tests and collect data using the AMBATS platform with the new programmable load. These tests will help gauge the performance of the new programmable load, as well as collecting data to be used for machine learning. The data will hopefully help us discover indicators to why batteries fail and how to optimize its performance. My name is Benjamin Feeney and I'm one of the electrical engineers for Eagle Pictures Eagle Eye BMRS platform. Here I will go over some of the te technical contributions that myself has implemented into this project. The first thing I did was be able to familiarize myself with the previous year's platform in order to better understand how it works and therefore make improvements to it. I identified a couple improvements that can be made to the platform. One of these was to construct the discrete load that was theorized by the previous year's project. In the virtual schematic for this, for this load, for this discrete load, it, there was a Zener diode incorrectly oriented that would be able to clamp the voltage to a specific reference voltage. This was incorrectly oriented. It was forward biased where it, when it should have been reverse biased. This was correctly identified in the Altium design and therefore could be corrected for. After thorough review of the design of the discrete load, I took charge of being able to assemble the prototype load using the prototype parts we ordered and then test it for its performance to verify it would behave the way we intended and 
Thankfully, it successfully behaved the way we intended, and it allowed us to move on to the final product. I would now like to go over some future technical accomplishments I would like to achieve before the end of the year to achieve the ABL. The most notable one is construct and test the final design of the discrete programmable load we've been working on for the past few weeks. If this final product is able to be constructed, it'll answer a major question for this project in order to create the better platform. The point, of this, the point of the construction of the discrete load is to then interface it with the current platform and replace the pulse with modulated load platform. To answer the question if the pulse with modulated load is injecting erroneous data into the sensors and throwing off the data. In order to do this, we need to update the PCB design that the cells will be on. This PCB will feature new modular cell holders, and better heat dissipation for the high power MOSFETs and resistors that'll be necessary for this load. And the final achievement I would like to accomplish is identify any other improvements that may not have been caught at first. Thank you, Ben. Um, I'd first like to take this time to thank the previous team for leaving us with the AMBADS DUES uh, test platform. Um, they did a tremendous job, and um, I know I can speak for all of us when I say we're thankful to have the ability to work on it. Um, <clears throat> so some of my technical contributions, uh, I looked into the configuration of the thermistor expansion module which can measure up to 80 different thermistor uh, taps. And the previous team um, tried implementing it, but found that it was messing with the data on the eight other cells that the BMS was um, using. So our goal was to ultimately get rid of the BMS for measuring the thermistor taps and only have it measure the voltage taps and solely use the uh, module to test the um, temperatures of the batteries. I also created a list of necessary components needed for the discrete load and the model load. Um, if you look down on the left, um, there's a picture of Sean Thurber's discrete load, which is what we are modeling off of. Um, so some of the components that we needed were uh, resistors, um, high-powered and low-powered, um, logic gates, MOSFETs, high-powered and low-powered MOSFETs, as well as an op-amp, um, potentiometers, um, and we needed eight different channels for this load. Um, I also figured out what must be moved on the PCB board. When um, using an IR camera, we found that um, the DC-DC converter was adding extra heat, but only to um, certain cells, which was messing with the uh, battery's temperature readings and providing inaccurate data, as well as um, a positive and negative linear voltage regulator. I also created a 3D model for a new battery cell holder. Um, if you look in the middle, if you look at the middle pic picture, sorry, um, that cell holder is um, what the improved cell holder will be modeled after. Uh, for that model, I just didn't take into account the thermodynamics of the battery as well as the implementation of the thermistor taps. But the whole goal of creating a new cell holder was that the current cell holders that we are using use spring contacts, which add unwanted resistance to the cell itself. So our goal is to implement RADSOC components 
which um, a male pin and a female socket, which will can provide 35 amps of current. Um, and then resisting resistance welding that female socket to the cell itself to create a stronger connection and provide more accurate data on the cell. Some of my my future technical accomplishments that I strive to achieve before the end of um, next semester, the spring semester, is implementing the thermistor expansion module into battery testing, as well as finishing improving the 3D model of the cell holder and actually printing that and um, resistance welding the, the cell with the RADSOC components. We're just waiting on the, the RADSOC components at the moment, but if you look in the picture in the middle, um, I added holes to the sides of the, the cell holder as well as um, areas wide enough to implement those thermistor taps into the actual battery so that the temperature readings are there. Um, we also need to order a new programmable power supply that can provide 150 volts, 10 amps, and 600 watts. Um, we, fa we found a programmable power supply. We just haven't ordered it yet. So ordering that by next semester is probably one of our top priorities. <clears throat> as well as updating our PCB board um, and implementing the improved cell holders with the rod saw components and uh, moving the components that add unwanted heat and um, interfere with our temperature readings away from the board, creating a two separate PCB boards that are still um, interconnected and share the same function functionality as the AMBATS DUS uh, PCB board. So a summary of all our key future technical accomplishments can be shown um, below with the following block diagram. Um, as you can see, we have implemented the housing of the discrete load, which shows the discrete load and the GUI together, connected to the computer with a USB, um, as well as the thermistor expansion module, which will be used to read uh, all the thermistor taps, which can connect to the computer using a, uh, a separate CAN bus from the Orion BMSs. Um, we also have the 150 volt power supply, which um, feeds into the the actual um, PCB, which is separated from the cell holder PCB. Um, the separation comes with the components that are needed to move, and the actual cell holder PCB, as you can see, has 12 different um, cell holders. And yeah. We would like we would like to take this time now to thank some um people who have helped us along the way with this project. Um Team Eagle I would like to first acknowledge uh Dan Wirtz and Brandon Moore, our technical directors. They have been tremendously helpful with getting us involved and started on this project. Um, without their guidance and knowledge, we would not be where we're at today in terms of this project. Um, we are grateful for the opportunity that, they're, that they and their company have presented to us. And we're really excited to um, achieve the anticipated best outcome. We would next like to thank uh, Brendan Smurbeck, who is our consulting technical director. Um, Mr. Smurbeck has been extremely helpful in making sure we stay on track, as um, well as giving us helpful tips and guidance to optimize time spent on certain materials. Um, we truly appreciate his expertise and hope to continue to gain knowledge um, from him throughout the next semester. We would also like to thank Dr. Yenyo Jung for allowing us to use his electronics lab. 
uh, Dr. Zhang has um, been extremely helpful as well by providing lab space and um, equipment to run tests um, on the BMRS. Finally, we would like to thank Dr. Harish Sunak um, for the opportunity to work with such an established company um, to gain real world experience as engineering students. Um, Dr. Sunak has put in countless hours to give us um, challenging projects this year and to test all of our skills. Um, we cannot express how grateful we are to have Dr. Sunak running the capstone program. So thank you guys.